Welcome everyone to the Art Workshop. My name is Christopher Epling. Thank you so much for tuning in today on behalf of Pike TV. We really appreciate your viewership. We've got a cool, cool, cool show in store today, literally. Cool in terms of it's winter time, almost, at least here in the mountains during the time of this recording. We've been talking a little bit about value in a couple shows and perspective. Now, I really highly encourage you, if you haven't yet, check out our archive. We're talking, we're going on 80 some shows and um, we're really excited to be able to provide all those for you. And it's on the Pike TV 99 YouTube page. So jump over to our YouTube channel. There's a playlist, there's other playlists on there. You'll find really interesting, cool stuff, all related and centralized here for you right here in Central Appalachia and Pike County. So please check out all of the archives when you get a chance. When you do check out those archives, you'll notice that there's a couple shows in there dealing and talking about perspective and value. Those are two things that I really highly try to promote in the workshop because when with art, especially younger, stu younger students and young artists, uh, those two things can really, really um, hinder their, their, their um, ability to, to create the type of work they want because the general understanding of how those two relate to one another, well, there's not a, not a big uh, understanding of that. And that's what I'm trying to do uh, a lot here in the show is talk about those two elements and see the cool thing about those two elements are we're not talking about medium, so you can use value and perspective with any medium you want from pen and ink to acrylic to oils to colored pencils, which is what we're doing today. Um, those two things apply. Now I wanna talk a little bit about materials today. So I've brought with me a few things that I'm gonna be working on. So colored pencils in terms of those things being used is, is essential to realize that colored pencils are a medium that is, is is, is kind of compressed into its own little compartment, right? So you have um, um, all the pigment right there between this on this wooden stick that you get to play around with. Now, how much pressure you choose to put in those is very, very um, important in, in, in getting value. And in today's episode, I thought we'd do kind of like a winter scene, something we've done before, but a little different. Now we're talking about value and perspective using colored pencils today. Before we've done that using various mediums uh, from acrylic to pen and ink to graphite to watercolor. Uh, colored pencils work a little different than all those mediums, of course, and obviously. Uh, they're a medium that is really easy, easily accessible. So if you go to any store, literally, that carries art supplies or school supplies, you're gonna find colored pencils in there. Now, does that mean you're gonna get a lot of value out of those? No pun intended. Uh, it depends, it depends on where you go. The more money that you spend on them, the more value you get because you know brands matter, yes, but we don't endorse any brands. So if you're looking to kind of use this technique of blending, which is gonna be the focus of today's episode with color pencils, you may wanna consider getting a brand that you can do that with. I'm not really sure if Crayola blends all that well. I've used it before in some of my workshops in the schools. I've noticed that sometimes they can get good results, other times they can't. Now, the materials that I've brought in today are Faber-Castell. So these are a set of Faber-Castell color pencils. Um, these blend very well. There's a range, as you can see, of color. So if you go and, let's say, to any um, um, art supply store, school supplies, you'll find that you get primary colors, you get a few um, secondary colors, and that's about all. In this kit, you have a really, really broad range. Um, the other materials that I brought with me today, and I think it's important to talk about materials because uh, for students who are getting into art and wanting to understand art more, it's really important to know what are the utensils that artists use. It may be a little obvious that of course, you know, we're gonna use a pencil, we're gonna use an eraser, but there's different types of erasers you can, you can use. There's different types of pencils that you can use, and this is important. I'm using a black wing pencil. Now what this is, is a standard 2B pencil. And on it, it's got a you know, eraser, nothing fancy. If you have paper at home, pencil and eraser, you can do this. If you have access to crayons, you can follow along with this. Um, so these don't really matter so much in terms of color, um, but you're all gonna have to have a pencil and paper though. You're also gonna have to have an ink pen of some sort. I'm using a felt tip pen. Now the difference in a felt tip and a, let's say a nib point or um, uh, a ball point is whenever you apply the ink down, this little guy right here, that tip um, is the felt part, right? So the ballpoint pen would make straighter lines. You have to cross hatch with those. With these, you can get a range of lines. So you can see at the bottom, let's do it at the top, top of the page here, you've got a thin line going and then the more pressure you put down, the thicker that line gets. Felt pens work that way. They're very, very, very useful whenever you're creating a landscape scene. I'm also gonna be using uh, a little bit of white ink in the form of this pen here. This is a 
pigment pen. This is a cyan brand. It doesn't mean what you use, Uniball. Um, but this is just white ink. This will be used at the very end when we put snow effect. If this doesn't work well, I've also got a bottle of ink that is white that we'll try out too. So basically that's my utensils. If you have a pen, pencil, eraser, paper at home with something to put color down, you're gonna be able to follow along, okay? So let's go ahead and get started in today's uh, exercise. This is gonna be a winter scene and all you have to do is take your paper, position it so that it's more tall than it is wide and follow along with me as I make my lines, you create yours, okay? The first thing we're going to do is establish what's known as our perspective. Our perspective, imagine if you will, you're standing, and this is a window pane, you're looking out into a field during winter. It's snow has fallen, you have about a foot of snow on the ground, there's some pine trees there, and let's say the sun is setting. So that is our environment we're working in. Now we have to establish our perspective. Perspective means how are you seeing what's outside this window pane, okay? From what perspective are you looking at, at looking at these elements? So we'll do this. Let's first draw our snow. Real simple, start on the left-hand side and bring a line coming across and going down towards the right-hand side, just like that. So this is kind of like a little embankment of snow. The good thing about snow is when you're working with white paper is that once you've established a line or two, you've already got the white you need for the snow, but we're, go we're not gonna cheat that way. We're gonna go a little bit further. Go ahead and add this line kind of coming up from where you left off here over to the right. So you have two lines and they kind of bend on each other. The sun will be setting. So let's go ahead right here and just add half a circle kind of right behind that embankment right there to show us where the sun is, okay? Now, very lightly on your page, I mean very lightly, you wanna erase this line in a minute. This isn't something that you're going to leave on your canvas or your paper. You're gonna be creating a line that's gonna be coming down into where the sun is. And the reason we're doing that is we're establishing our perspective. This is considered a vanishing point in art. So that means everything is kind of being sucked into that point. This is the furthest way you can see in this, in this drawing. This is the furthest element in this drawing, that sun. So if we were to draw a row of trees coming down, they'd have to follow that line going down towards the sun, okay? Same thing for the left-hand side, but watch this. For this, we're starting way up here and we're coming down towards the sun. So you, hopefully you can see those two lines. Very, very, very lightly on your page, draw those lines. Now we're gonna use these two lines as our guide marks. These are our um, establishing lines of where the tops of the trees will be in our, in our drawing. So what that means is start over on your right hand side and you're starting to put some trees in here. Start at the top, make like an arrow or an upside down V and then continue to create these little upside down V's all the way down getting a little bit wider as you get towards the bottom. See that, how it's thickening out? It's, it's actually starting to uh, form a tree as you get to the bottom there, see? You can't really see a whole lot from this side. This goes off of our canvas. But you can add a few little lines there if you want. Now we're gonna be following this line again, our establishing line, our guiding line, to show us where the next top of the tree will be. So here, same thing as you did with the first one going to come down towards the bottom, getting wider as you go down, okay? And you can already see kind of how this flows down into this drawing. Now, try to make some different looking trees too. Some are thick, some are thin, maybe a few in behind it. So a couple right there. Just keep on adding more and more trees as you go down towards the setting sun. Now, remember, as you're putting these trees in, the further away you get, the less you can see of the trees. Okay, so this tree here is going to be less detailed than our tree up in our foreground. Same thing on the left-hand side. We wanna do the same type of lines that we made on the right. But this is gonna be a little different though. This is where we have to kind of really imagine or use our imagination to place ourselves here looking out this window during winter. We're going to imagine that there's a tree very close to us here. The row of trees that are making up the left-hand side are harder to see. So that means this big one we're gonna draw in a second is going to block the smaller ones going down more 
than this one did on the right hand side. Confusing, maybe a little bit, but it won't be when we get started if you follow along with me step by step. All right. First thing we're going to do, come to the top up here. Just like you created this V for this tree, do the same thing up here. We're going to come down a lot, a lot larger this time though. See, this is literally this tip of that tree now is right here on our left hand side. We're going to keep kind of widening it out as we go down, making it thicker and thicker as we get down towards the bottom. Now we're going to come all the way down to right there. Notice how this tree kind of bends out towards the left a little bit. This tree behind it now, we can't see very much of it. And so on and so forth. All the way down the line, place your pine trees kind of right behind one another until you get to the point where you see the sun. Okay, So that's how we establish perspective. Now, once we've used these establishing lines, these guiding lines, we can get rid of them, right? We don't need them. So I'm going to erase mine here and a few more of the little lines I made in this area. Erasing is very important too, because sometimes we add things and then we want to keep them there for a second to use them and then get rid of them. All right. That's uh, something that we have to do in art. We have to establish our own rules sort of, and then we have to play by those rules. So our rules for this drawing is that the trees come in this line towards the sun on the left and then a wider view from the ones on the right. Now we've established our setting, we've established our perspective, we've established the elements or the composition in our piece. What we have to do from this point now is start using our tools over here to create our color. One rule of thumb always when it comes to creating art using colored pencils is go light to dark. Go light to dark on each segment of your art. So the first segment I want to work on is the sky coming up this way. You can use your pencil if you want to, and you can kind of create some cloud lines in here. And what this is going to be is going to, it's going to be horizontal lines going back and forth very lightly on your page. Kind of just move it around, make shapes that kind of resemble clouds back and forth all the way down into the sunset. Okay. The reason I like to go ahead and create those lines is think of this as like a coloring book page, but you created it, right? So you've established what everything will be in your drawing, but now you get to color your own coloring book page. Having these lines here help to show us where we'll break up our color. It's not necessarily things we want to keep always for, till the end of our drawing. Now I'm going to use a yellow first. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to color in where the sun is. And you're barely going to be able to see this yellow. It's a very light yellow. If you do not have, a, let's say, variations of yellow in your color pencil set or whatever you have at home, just use one color and press down lightly to get a value of that color. Does, and then as you're going out, up, press down a little bit lighter so you're getting a lighter value. Basically, the harder you press down, the more color you're going to get, right? So. Keep that in mind as you're coloring your piece. So I'm going to take this yellow now in between my trees. And I'm going to bring it up into the clouds a little bit. So the light of the sun is being blocked out some by these trees. So we're not going to worry about coloring those trees just yet. But we want to add as much yellow as we can leading down into where the sun is. There we go. We've got some yellow on there. Now we can start to work with the rest of our uh, piece. I'm gonna put a little bit at the top too, maybe going around the edges. All right, there we go. Now, this is where the type of brand or whatever color pencil, not we don't endorse any, but I'm just saying that the more, the more value that you put in your utensils or your medium and your supplies, then the, the more variation you can use with them with, especially with color pencils when it comes to blending, okay? The cheaper the color pencils, the harder they are to blend. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in with an orange. Now this should start to blend a little bit. You'll see a difference. Now notice my lines going up, forming those clouds. I'm going to start very, very lightly, very lightly, placing some orange here along these rows of clouds. Now I don't want to have this orange kind of overtake my whole 
uh, sky, but I want to be able to see bits and pieces of this orange here and there around the yellow. Notice what I'm doing. I'm going kind of up with this, back and forth. I'm placing it just in a few different um, key locations on my, on my canvas. So we're going up towards the sky. Now down here towards the sun, behind the trees a little bit, let's make this a little bit more, a little more intense here. So press down a little bit harder. As you get closer to the sun, you'll put down a little bit more value. You can see now how this starts to work. It starts to almost kind of look as if it's blending down into the sunset there. That's what we want. We want this nice gradual flow. Now you can go back in over top of your yellow and this is where the blending part really comes into play. So what you're doing is you're coloring over top in the edges of your first um, yellow color that you've placed down. Just around the edges, blending it out more. I'm doing circular motions with my hand. So I'm going around in circles, moving that pigment onto the canvas. You don't want to go back and forth like this, straight down, because what happens is the only thing that's going to be touching your canvas is the tip of that pencil and you'll get a line. You don't want a line. You want the side of the pigment to blend. You don't want a straight line. You want just a nice blending of these colors like that. Okay. So now we've used orange and yellow. We're going to go a little bit, little bit kind of in an opposite direction here. I'm going to pull out some. If you have pink at home, um, we're going to put a nice pink hue here in our sunset. So up here towards the top, kind of in the middle. If you don't have pink, you can use red. But I really, really, really strongly advise you to press down lightly with your red if you if you're going to go that route, okay? Because you you really want to be careful. Um, this is a stronger color, especially with, you know, if you have like a, just a regular solid red, it's a very strong color. So it will overtake the other colors around it. So very lightly press down. Just a little bit here and there because we're going to blend this more as we go forward. Notice I'm blending now over top of my orange a little bit in between these trees. Circular motions with your pencil. And now you can kind of step back from it and look and see if there's any other areas you really want to kind of blend in with it. But the orange and the yellow should start to blend now in certain key locations, such as here and down here. OK, those are areas that you really want to try to get a nice blend of color in between the trees going down towards the sun like that. OK, now let's go in a completely opposite direction. Pull out your blue. What you're going to do with this is you're going to come up here in this giant area we left out and you're going to start to put some blue in there. First start in an area that is just white paper. Don't worry about blending this just yet. What we want to do first is just get a row of color on here. So notice I'm just going around this white area with my blue. I'm not filling up this whole space, just certain areas down here now. We'll put a few more rows. Now, hopefully what starts to happen is this starts to look like clouds that are in the sky kind of being uh, illuminated by the light of the sun. And you do this by just putting blue down very lightly in circular motions. And you can start to blend the edges now too. So once you've established a little bit of that color, go in and start to blend them. Now you're going to see this go over top of the yellow some. And what this does is it evenly distributes the color on your canvas. You don't have to color up every single area with this blue, but just like you did with the orange, it's going to be in the pink too, in the red. You want to use key locations where you put this blue in there and have it stick out like right here. So as you're going down, you're just filling this area up more. It should start to blend. You'll notice that it starts to blend a little bit more, a little bit easier after you've applied a couple colors on here. Now the goal is to get this sky to easily transition from this golden rays of sunshine up into the blue, the blue area of the, of the atmosphere. See? If you go around the edges that you've already created your lines with, you should be able to get this effect. Down here too, 
go across the back of the trees. So we should be able to see more blue towards the right hand side of the page than you do the left. Once we're finished. There we go. Get inside all those little tiny crevices that you've created with the limbs of your trees. Now, once you've established that first line of blue, you can go back over it now and start to darken in certain areas, like in between here, a little bit darker, and then up here. There we go. We just want to make sure that we include some blue throughout this right hand page, side of the page. Now, once we've done that, we want to jump in now. I want you to pull out a purple. If you have purple, violet, something close to that anyway would work. I'm going to use standard purple. I'm going to go inside down in the middle part here where this orange and yellow is really predominant. We want to include some of this nice purple. This is where you start to follow your pencil lines more. So those little lines that you created at the beginning, go back and forth over top of those lines. What you should start to see is this starts to look almost like the different rays of the sun bouncing off different elements in the atmosphere, creating all these beautiful colors that you see in wintertime. Coolness of the air. A little bit down here, maybe towards the sun going up and behind the trees. Circular motions with your pencils. It helps to really kind of blend that pigment in us. You can see how this starts to look a little bit more, a little bit more predominant now as you're blending it. Behind the tree, off into the distance there, okay? Now the goal for this is now to start on our trees. For our trees, we're gonna be using a darker color. And what will happen is the wider the snow with the sky in the background, the darker trees will offset that some. OK, so we're going to start out using a brown. If you have a darker brown, it'd be good. You should have two usually kits of what of color pencils come with a couple of different browns. And what we're going to do is very lightly, very lightly put a coat of brown on these trees. It's going to go down. <clears throat> Follow your lines, <clears throat> excuse me. All the way down the sides of your tree. This is, should be very lightly. This will be used now to blend a little bit later. Okay, so you're not going to, you're not going to press down hard right now. Those trees that fall off way in the distance, those will be much darker later. We're just going to get a coat of color on here. Something like that. Now it starts to look like a silhouette a little bit. Come over here to these trees. We're gonna do the same thing. A nice coat of brown. Notice how I'm following my lines. So I'll come down and I'll sketch over top of the pencil lines first, and then I fill in that section with the light brown. You wanna make sure you coat all of your trees with the brown first before we start putting in any of the darker colors. All the way down towards the sunset. Now, as you do this, you're gonna notice that your trees start to look as if they're one big silhouette. And that's a good thing. That's not a bad thing because we want it to be silhouetted. Um, we're at the point right now with our art, where we've established these colors down as kind of like our, our, um, you know, our, our foreground and our background um, coating. And now we're gonna jump in and put our detail. I'm gonna pull out a green now. I'm gonna pull out a dark green. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start over on this hand side and you're gonna now blend this in with your brown. You're going to color in the side that's farthest away from the sun first and then move in towards the sun. You kind of see what I'm doing. Starting over to the right, going in towards where the sun is. In a little bit, what we're gonna do is actually jump in and use our um, felt pen. So, the details of these trees will really pop out. But we need a coat of this color in here first. So go in now and just make sure that all of this is nice and silhouetted. It should look like one giant shape going down towards the sun. Brown and green 
whenever you put them together like this, establish a really nice undercoat for what we're gonna do next. As of right now though, it doesn't look like much I know, but when we start to actually add more of the uh, darker uh, values, it will. But you need this as your undercoat. Keep all the way down to the bottom. On this side, what I'm doing is I'm starting on the side that's closest to the sun and moving out towards the left. The opposite of what you did on the other side. Okay, everyone, uh, you may notice a little bit of a lag there, but we had a fire drill right here in the studio, but we're back at it now, everything's okay. Hopefully you are too at home and following along with me. Uh, you're gonna notice as we're blending the colored pencils, now this approach, um, that I'm taking on this is a little different. So let's say if we were to blend every little tiny area pulling in all these different values with color pencils, that's possible, you can do that um, to get a nice kind of realistic transition. My stuff's more illustration based. So I like to do work that is kind of um, a little bit impressionist. So you'll see kind of, you know, it resembles something, <laughs> but it's not photo realism. And I think that's the best way to learn though, because once you have these general kind of techniques down where you're working and blending in a general fashion, you're able to take those techniques and then go and actually create something that is kind of like photorealistic. What I'm doing now is just filling in more of the black. So I'm outlining my trees more, trying to get more of this silhouette. You'll notice the trees that are further away from us in our window pane here, they're gonna be darker, they're gonna be harder to see. And not to mention, they're silhouetted by the rays of the sun. So in between your trees, you can add some more um, solid shapes that form, that form the pine trees. Now let's work on this side up at the top. I'm just gonna bring lines that kind of come down and shoot out from the tree. I'm following the general lines that I made originally, those first lines that you use with your pencil. I'm following those first. And then I can add my detail in. So we'll basically just be continuing with that so that we're able to get that nice flow of the line moving in towards the tree. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and go down the line here and then we'll go back and we'll fix it up. Down, all of the shapes that I made originally, adding a few more maybe, silhouetted here and there. Be sure though that you outline your trees and then go back in with your detail. Now, I'm adding a little bit of black shadowing. Now, kind of pay attention if you don't mind where I'm placing this. I'm putting this on the farthest left-hand side, and then as I move in towards the sun, we're gonna lessen this effect. The reason for that is we have the light of the sun that's gonna be hitting portions of these kind of limbs sticking out. So although this is gonna be more shadow, as you get down here, we're gonna be moving in towards the middle of the tree, and we're getting less shadow as we move towards the sun, see? And you wanna do that all the way down the side of your pine tree, even at the bottom down here. Leave a little bit of light in there. Make sure your edge, making up the farthest left-hand portion of the page is nice and silhouetted in like that. Because this portion is gonna be the portion that is more hidden from these rays sticking out, if that makes sense. Now we have this black on brown on green, and we have all the formation of our clouds, but not detailed in. We don't wanna have that outlined. The reason for that is this black, if we use it sparingly throughout the piece, will make the elements that we chose to use the black on pop out more, as you can see with the trees. Now, what I wanna do with my white, if you have a white colored pencil, grab that, and what you should be able to do is go over top of now all of the yellow and the orange and the blue in the sky. And if you just basically go over it, coloring every portion of it with the white, you'll see this blending start to occur. And you can notice right here how nice and blended that is. So we want to have that effect now across the sky. So use your white circular motions, go across your entire sky. Okay, this helps to blend in. Now what, what's happening here if you were able to use a microscope and move in and look at what's going on on the page, color pencils are made up of usually a wax pigment. So that's actually some sort of a waxy color, right? So whenever you apply this wax over top of other, you know, layers of wax, it starts to blend. And that's what's happening. 
we're just basically applying more wax over top of this color. Using white, where it's just a base color with color pencils, it helps to blend in these edges more. So you'll see now this starts to really kind of look less edgy and more blended in. Those are some real technical terms there, edgy for art, but hopefully you understand what I mean. All around the edges of the clouds. Now, natural thing that occurs whenever you use a pencil for too long, you have to sharpen it. And I want to do that and keep a nice sharp tip on this pencil, something like that, because as you're blending, you're not, like I said, pointing straight down, making these straight lines. You're using the edge of your pencil to really get that blended effect. Now you can blend with other colors. They don't have to be white, but what happens is if you blend with another, like a light blue, you're gonna get a very thin film of blue across your entire sky. We don't want that. We wanna keep these colors that we've, we've preserved um, by using white. All around the edges up here. Now the very last thing we're gonna do after we've blended this in is go back in with our ink pen, with that felt pen. Now you don't have to have a felt pen. You can actually use um, a ballpoint pen, but you'd have to use more uh, cross-hatching effect, which is not, we're not covering that today, but I can show you a little bit on how to do it in case that's all you have. Now if you noticed, I've went over this entire sky and I've went back and forth in circular motions. If you wanted to, you notice how this is all kind of flowing. You see my pencil lines how it looks like this is going down into the sun. If you wanted to, you could go back over in opposite direction now. So instead of going from up and down, left to right, you could reverse that. Almost making like X's across your pages with a white pencil, okay? And by doing that, it kind of takes that effect where everything's moving in this flow direction and it blends it more. And we're gonna leave ours where it is for now because we wanna be able to work in this technique of our felt pen at the very end. I'm gonna go back real fast and use a yellow again. I just wanna make sure that this area down at the bottom is really nice and bright with this yellow, something like that. And you can even blend in some yellow towards the top and even move it up towards the top where the blue is too if you want, just a little bit more. There's some areas that didn't get it and I wanna make sure and cover it very good. So I'm gonna do that real fast down here at the bottom in between these trees. There we go. All right, now for our felt pen. If you're at this point now, you notice we've left, left this white down here. We could go back in with our color pencil and just put a coat of white on here if you wanted. There'll be some shadow, some light blues that you may see appear in the snow. Um, but with our felt pen now, you're gonna trace over these pencil lines that you made. But what you're gonna be sure and do is work in the areas that are farthest away from the sun, okay? So that means all of these edges on the right-hand side of these trees, okay? Few here, just a few, not much, because this area on the right-hand side is farthest away from our light source. So it's gonna have more shadow. And all we're doing is just trying to get more definition in on our trees, on the silhouette of our trees. If you're using a ballpoint pen at home, you can do this effect you're gonna have a thinner line. Your lines will be very thin. So what you'll have to do is actually go in with your ballpoint pen and make straight lines in one direction and then make opposite lines going in the other direction. And this is cross hatching. And you can do that all through this area here. I'll do a little bit to show you what it looks like. So you're just going back over those lines that you made and you're basically just making a block pattern of X's like that. Okay, let's move on now, keep going, try to get all this area nice and silhouetted in, especially these trees down here closer to the sun. Those you'll see less and less detail of. I really like working on the trees that are behind other trees because those you just basically have to fill in completely black. I really like the look of that too, of those trees kind of poking up behind the other ones. These rows of trees over here follow the same kind of technique as the, as the ones on the right, so you, but it's, it's flipped. So where we darkened in this area that is closest to, uh, farthest away from the sun, we're gonna be blocking in the area that's farthest away from the sun on this side. So that means we're gonna be working from left to right because here's our light source and the sun isn't hitting this area of the tree. 
So just put some lines in there, moving out towards the middle, something like that, and then go down the row behind it, the same direction, filling in all of the left-hand side of the trees. And what you're gonna be left with here in a second is this silhouette pattern of these trees with the snow and the sky. And the last thing we wanna do is use our color pencil again, use the white one, and we're gonna get it nice and sharp because even though we could get away with having this be blank, right? There's nothing there. Um, I do wanna fill it in with some white, even though you can't really see it all that well, because the last thing we're gonna do is put a little bit of shadow in here. I think we'll go ahead and do that. So I'm coloring all this area with my white color pencil. And the snow banks, even though these are white, we're gonna see a little bit of color popping out. So right here in a second, after you get that area nice and filled in, and you'll see that it'll pull some of your pencil line down too, helping with shadow. We're gonna use a light blue. Okay, so grab a very light blue color you have. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be the exact one that I'm using. And we're going to put a little bit of shadow in here. The shadow for this is gonna be very light. Circular motions start towards the back. And as you're moving towards the sun, you're gonna make this thinner and thinner. Okay, see how that works? Over here, this area is gonna be darkened in, furthest away from the sun, very lightly come towards the center. There we go. So it gives us the effect that there's a shadow. And the blue really helps because, you know, the, the snow is, is water and, you know, we can use this blue kind of as a reflection of maybe some of those little crystals in the snow being blocked out. And we do have like snow banks here too. So we have this one overlapping the other. And you could darken that in a little more if you wanted to really kind of get the effect that maybe it's right at the edge of dark. Um, it's up to you on how much detail you want to put in with this blue, but you could keep working that and blending that nicely so that it gives the effect that there is uh, some shadow there, okay? Going over it one more time with white will help to get those edges softened up so that it doesn't look so much like pencil lines or crayon marks, it looks more like a nice flow of color. Now you're not gonna be able to do this completely perfectly, but it will help a lot. And you'll see how it works once you start to put it down on your paper. So hopefully you have access to color pencils. I really highly encourage you to play around with them, see what sort of effects you get from blending certain colors together. It's a little bit of a smudge right there, but we'll be okay. But as you can see, we've used color pencil with pen and ink and we've blended this nice little scene that we would imagine seeing looking out the window sometime in, later on in the year. They're towards winter time. So I'm gonna take this tape off. This is my favorite part actually of doing drawings where I block them out with tape. If you have painter's tape or masking tape, you can frame your picture up a little bit. And then when you pull that tape off, it looks like a nice square. And let's see here if I can't remove the bottom. There we go. That's exactly what we wanted. We want that nice flow of going into the white. Always sign your work. And so you know when you did it and who did it too, right? I hope you enjoyed today's episode. This has been a fun one for me. I love this time of year. I love working with color pencil. I love also watercolor, which you see we use um, on a few videos. Be sure and check out our archive. I mentioned at the beginning of the show, but it's um, a really, really vast, cool um, collection of videos and techniques and art. Basic, Just basic drawing and um, uh, having fun with uh, different mediums. Well, thank you again for tuning in. I hope everyone's doing well. Hang in there. I know times have been a little challenging, but we'll get there. Art is always a great, great way to uh, uh, kind of escape from, from things and just have some fun and create something. So thanks again for tuning in. On behalf of Pike TV, I'm Christopher Epling. Until next time, keep drawing.